I want everyone to enjoy my manga. If this is your current goal, you're going to fail as a pro mangaka. This kind of wishful thinking is one of the most common beginner pitfalls. If you're serious about earning a living from your manga and making it as a pro mangaka one day, then make sure to stick around until the very end. Because in this video, we're going to teach you how to plan and set up your manga for success and increase your chances of actually hitting it off with potential publishers. We've worked with pro Japanese mangakas who have a combined experience of over 50 years in the manga industry. We've helped nearly 400 aspiring anime and manga artists who have gone on to monetize their art. We know what it takes to turn your passion into an actual career. And we gotta be honest, it takes more than just amazing art skills to make it. If you're serious about joining manga contests, publishing your story, and leaving a personal legacy with your manga, then apply to our online one-shot manga drawing program. You can book a free consultation call with us to see if we'd be a good fit to work together. The link is in the description. There are different ingredients in making a successful manga, and some of the most important ones are the decisions you make before you even start drawing. You know one of the first things you need to decide on? Your target audience. Ask yourself, who is your demographic? Who are your ideal readers? What are their preferences? I know a lot of you want to make manga mainly for yourselves, and that's absolutely amazing. It's a great way to express yourself, release your emotions, and share your personal experiences. But if you want to monetize this and actually gain a following, you have to understand what your readers and even potential editor or publisher would want. You have to take it beyond just a personal project. On the flip side, we've encountered quite a few young aspiring mangakas who want to make this into an actual career and believe that they could make a manga that everyone would love. The reality is that if you try to please everyone, then you please no one. Look at One Piece. It's the number one manga in the world. It's super popular with over 516 million copies sold worldwide by August 2022. So many people love it, but there are still people that hate it. You can't make a manga that every human on earth would enjoy. It's just impossible. You gotta embrace the reality that your manga won't be for everyone. And that's okay. At the very least, you want to create something that a group of people can enjoy. And like we said earlier, start by thinking of a target mm. audience. You probably already know some of the most popular audience demographics. Shonen that targets young boys. Shoujo that targets young girls. Seinen that targets older men. And Jose that targets older women. If you understand the people you're making your manga for, then you'll know what kind of message and story they'd be able to relate to. The publishers you work with would also have an easier time marketing your title to the right audience. And you know what happens? The people that read your manga are more likely to enjoy it. It's a win-win-win situation for everyone. Just so you fully understand how picking a demographic affects your manga, imagine this scenario. You want to buy a bar of chocolate. So you go to the grocery store, you go to the sweets aisle, get your chocolate, and then right next to it, you spot a can of candies. You've never tried it before, but it looks interesting. So you get it as well. After trying, you realize that you actually love the flavor and start buying the candy regularly. In grocery stores, similar products are grouped together, right? This is because they want you to buy more stuff. Publishers group manga together as well, and they want you to read more manga. You might be coming to the shonen aisle for Jujutsu Kaisen, but they hope you also notice the newly debuted shonen title for that month. Do you know how they do this? In Japan, each publisher has multiple anthology magazines. Each magazine is a collection of manga one-shots and serialized chapters from different mangakas. But you know what they all have in common? They all have the same target demographic. 
For example, Japanese publisher Shueisha releases Weekly Shonen Jump. You might be familiar with it. It's a shonen magazine mainly targeting young boys aged 12 to 18. Weekly Shonen Jump features the latest chapters of One Piece, Boruto, Chainsaw Man, Jujutsu Kaisen, and a bunch of other titles all at the same time. Shueisha also publishes Weekly Young Jump. I know, I know, Weekly Shonen Jump and Weekly Young Jump sound quite familiar, but don't get them confused. Weekly Young Jump is actually a seinen magazine. It mainly targets male university students and young working men. This magazine introduced Oshinoko, Gantz, and Kingdom to the world. Meanwhile, you have another publisher, Kodansha. They regularly release Bisatsu Shonen Magazine. It's a monthly shonen manga anthology that introduced Blue Lock and Attack on Titan. Another publisher, Hakusensha, produces Hanato Yume. It's a semi-monthly shoujo magazine that featured Fruits Basket, Gakuen Alice, and Skip Beat. Anyway, you get the idea. There are a bunch of anthology magazines out there by different publishers. If you want to increase your chances of getting published, you want to have an idea which publishers you want to approach in the first place. Don't just pick randomly. Imagine going to the editorial department of Weekly Shonen Jump with a Jose manga. You'd be rejected right away. When you decide on your demographic and the publishers you ideally want to work with, you can plan your story's central themes. You want to pick a theme that your demographic can relate to. For example, when you think of common shonen themes, what do you think of? Nakama power, never giving up, action and adventure. These are all exciting for young boys. What about seinen? It actually revolves around darker themes. Mental health issues, gore, the cruelty of mankind. Not exactly something most 12-year-old kids would be crazy about. For shoujo, romance, first love, high school life, stuff a lot of teenage girls dream about. And for Jose, building a career, friendship between women, there's still love, but it gets more complicated. Like, how do you salvage a marriage? What does being married even mean? These are all problems that older women face in their daily lives. Whatever demographic you choose, think about the message you want to convey. What would you like your readers to feel? After they read your manga, what do you want them to walk away with? If you can answer this, then it would help shape the flow of your story. And you can potentially create something impactful that your readers will take with them long after your story is done. Lastly, one of the key elements that publishers look for are your characters. According to fairy tale mangaka Hiro Mashima, whether you're aiming to win a manga award or creating a serialization, you have to create memorable characters. You bet that editors will be hypercritical about this. The problem we see with beginners is that they're stuck at surface level character design. They want their characters to look cool. They give them all these crazy power systems, but that's not the only thing that makes a good character. Let's take Erwin from Attack on Titan, for example. Do people love him because he's the best looking? Because he's the strongest? Not really. What stands out is his strong leadership. He's decisive and fearless. He's respected by his troops. And you don't see that just by looking at his visual design. You see that through his actions. And it's influenced by his goals, desires, beliefs, experiences that shape him as a unique character. You gotta dig deep and imagine your character as if they were a real person living in this world you created, facing this problem you put them in. What kind of decisions would they make? If you want to make sure you can create memorable characters, we actually talk more about the three levels of character design in another video. You can check it out through the link in the description. Have all these tips got you thinking about your manga? Do you think you need more help planning and actually making it? Well, if you're serious about creating your own manga, joining contests, and even pitching to publishers, then we invite you to apply to our online one-shot manga drawing program. You can book a free consultation call with us to see if we're a good fit to work together. <laughs>
The link to apply is in the description. In the meantime, you can learn more about how to become a pro mangaka by watching this video.